Tour de France is like a childhood dream, and then when you get there, you find out it's a nightmare. Yeah. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's the most pain I've ever endured. I've never suffered so much in my life as during a Tour de France. We are here with Pat Yonker. He won the Tour Down Under back in 2004. And so we're going to have a chat with him today and just find out what it's like to ride in the Tour Down Under, to be a, a professional cyclist, and the difference between cycling back then and now. And so, yeah, first off, Pat, um, yeah, that's a question for you one. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me on Serafina. So I'll follow you on YouTube and you got a lot of fans <laughs> and uh, yeah, really admire what you do and especially I think last year, 300 kilometer ride. I think uh, yeah, that was very, very, very impressive. So um, yeah, riding uh, the actual Tour Down Under as a professional cyclist is obviously a lot of pressure to perform. I think that's why when you watch the footage on TV, you see a lot of crashes where people do really uh, fight tooth and nail. And it's, it's cycling is not a physical sport, but you'll find that in the professionals, a lot of elbowing going on. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, elbowing <laughs> like that. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Uh, people are overlapping wheels. And it's often when they overlap a wheel and um, that the crashes occur. So crashes have always been a part of the sport, unfortunately. That's why people like me are covered in scars. Uh, professional cyclists will tell you, well, you don't have to be professional. Anyone who's competitive cyclist will tell you, well, regardless if you're amateur or whatever, that it can be a very physical sport and you really need to be on a high level of focus and concentration. And it's that concentration of focus for hours on end that is as fatiguing sometimes as a 200 kilometer stage. So you'll be always thinking about, um, you know, staying upright because you're always aware of the, of the danger. So it is a physical sport. It's, um, obviously everyone understands that it's a very physically hard sport because you're pedaling, you know, for hours on end with a heart rate of 160 or 180 beats a minute all day. Um, it's also a physical, uh, uh, psychologically demanding sport, even more so than when I was younger or in my day, because um, the, the guys are really performing at a very, very intense level, and so they're mentally always very fatigued. Uh, there's a lot of mental fatigue and burnout, and we see a lot of riders uh, uh, do, do burn out uh, maybe quicker than, than in my day. So um, it's definitely become more, not, not, not competitive, it's faster, aggressive, and there's a lot more at stake. There's actually a lot more money to be made today, so the guys are earning a very good salary, and when you put money into the equation of young men, uh, who are hungry? Then uh, you're gonna. You've got this perf all these perfect ingredients of young men, a sport that's very hard and physical, and then some real financial gains to be made. They are riding for sheep stations, and they're willing to crash in order to to to, uh, to get that victory. Hey there, stage um, stage uh, two of the Tour Down Under from Brighton to Victor Harbour, and you know going into the last corner, the bunch wasn't sprinting for the win because Rowan Dennis and Jay Vine were ahead in a small group, and they took the. Uh, first and second, but the guys behind, you know, there may only be room for, um, you know, going into the last corner, there'll be six wide, but there will be only room for four people. So, um, and whoever breaks loses. So there's a real mentality, you break, you lose. And um, that's, unfortunately, the consequences are, there's, there's a lot of crashes. And we saw Robert Gasing, I think, break his hip yesterday. And a few riders are already um, at home in, or at the hospital. And uh, yeah, that's um, part of the sport. Yeah. yeah part of the sport. <laughs> so. So, so how does it compare uh, from when you were racing to now? So the bikes are different. Yeah. The bikes are, how, how, how much of an advantage does that give people now? Yeah. The bikes today are, are really amazing. They're like real super bikes. Uh, most have disc brakes. Uh, the bikes in my day, so we're talking early 2000s, uh, the bikes were definitely not as aerodynamic. So the bikes were, um, were light. In my time, the bikes were light. But what they found was, it's not so much about a light bike, it's about an aerodynamic bike. So the bikes today are very aerodynamic. So I put them in a wind tunnel and there's very little drag. So the bikes are very stiff, stiffer, super aerodynamic, still lightweight, and um, the braking power they have today is very, a lot of braking power, which we didn't have. 
in the old days, we had rim, rim brakes and you kind of, in the wet, you didn't have that kind of brake. And you're ready to ride as your first race. What's going through your head? Like what, and, and then you, it goes and you, oh, <laughs> what's going through your head? Uh, you know, we have a, a, a coach or a director sportif in a team car who has a, a radio and we're in constant radio communication with a car. So, oh, so you're, and, got, you're listening to people yeah, talking to you the yeah, whole time? So we've got an earpiece in here, we have a little earpiece and we're constantly listening to uh, what the coach or ra ra director sportif is talking about the wind talking about race situation. We're constantly getting um, information for our, in our earpiece and we're able to, to, to communicate with each other. So uh, on a race day, we, we, we don't, obviously when our heart rates are 190, we're not talking very much. But um, we, do, we have a bit of chit chat going on about who's feeling good and uh, you have to be honest about how you're feeling and you know how the team leader's going and how he's feeling. And um, it's chit chat all day. And then the last hour or two of the race when it's full bore, um, this is only a little bit of chit chat because we can't talk. Um, but, but yeah, we're always looking at uh, the, the hills that are coming up, uh, the wind direction, and we're also, also always thinking about refueling the body, really seeing the, the human body as a, as a machine in a sense that we know we need to take in you know, 80 grams of carbohydrates an hour, and we need to hydrate with you know, 500, 600 milliliters of electrolytes and energy drinks an hour. So we're always, um, it's not so that when you're cycling that you can switch off mentally. You actually have to switch on mentally. And because uh, if you are not, don't rehydrate or replenish your calories, you're gonna hit the wall. There's a difference between riding a, a training ride of 200 kilometer training ride uh, than racing. So as soon as there's a number on the bike and a number on your back, yeah, the, with with that becomes a um, yeah, it becomes stress. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 today's athlete is definitely more stressed out than in my day, where it was a little bit more relaxed. We're yeah. still very serious athletes, but today it's a hyper level of of, 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 of because there are only so many world tour spots. In the, uh, there's only so many professional positions available at the highest level, and it's probably thousands and thousands of cyclists who want. Uh, to be um, in that position. So you're always looking, um, uh, if you have a, a bad few months or a bad year, you, you could be kicked out of the World Tour very quickly. There's always someone who, wa who uh, wants your spot. We, we have a month off a year. Uh, most athletes will have one month off where for a couple of weeks they'll just uh, get into the ice cream and cookies and, <laughs> and uh, put on some fat. That's the best time of the year is off season. Everyone loves off season. It's like nothing like an offy where you can hit the haagen ice cream and have some shit food and, and drink some al more alcohol than you normally do. Um, although riders do drink alcohol during the whole year and to you know, whatever reasons. Um, but yeah, the big thing, the hardest thing about cycling is, is uh, having to be a very low uh, body fat. So most of the athletes are under 10% body fat, uh, eight, seven, eight percent body fat. And anyone who uh, knows to maintain such low body fat, that's extremely, extremely difficult. And, and discipline is a superpower. If you can have, uh, if you have a discipline as an athlete, that's a, that's a very, that's a very, that's a gift. Yeah. Yeah, discipline is a key word. You know, talk about dedication, determination, but it, uh, yeah, it all comes down to um, discipline because it is, a, it is the hardest sport. I, I, a lot of athletes will tell you it's probably one of the hardest sports there is on the planet. It's cycling, road cycling. Uh, three week races like Tour de France or a week race like Tour de Londres because there's sacrifices you make, you know, you train hard and then you can't eat much. Riding in the Tour de Londres, so you've also ridden in the Tour de France. Yeah, Tour de France is a bit different, yes. Yeah, how, how different is that? I mean, we're, we're here at the Tour de Londres, yeah. but and we don't want to talk too much about the Tour de France because we're here yeah, in Tour Australia, but, but what is the, the difference in that? Like, how does that feel competing in that compared to competing in the Tour de Londres? Yeah, the Tour de France is like a childhood dream, and then when you get there, you find out it's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, it's a dream, and you get there and you go, this is a friggin' nightmare. Um, it's the hardest thing I've ever done, it's the most pain I've ever endured. Uh, suffering, I've never suffered so much in my life as during a Tour de France. You can, um, you know, um, you're so dehydrated sometimes that, uh, you know, there's a bit of blood in your urine, you're, you're throwing up sometimes because you can't keep the food down. It's uh, three weeks 
of a lot of suffering and enduring. But I think what you learn is that if you can mentally, um, all those obstacles in front of you, if you can break them down in little manageable pieces mentally and not think about three week race, but think of it as a one day event and try and get to the halfway mark each day. So you've got to learn to think differently. If you've got a massive obstacle to overcome, you have to uh, get that obstacle and chop it in many different little pieces and just eat one little piece at a time because the Tour de France will just overwhelm you and crush you. It crushes most people. I crashed at my first Tour de France and I got to uh, three days before Paris and then uh, I had to pull out through my injuries through the fall but also through <laughs> mental exhaustion and physical exhaustion. When I was about to give up and, and pull out the Tour de France and then because uh, I felt physically exhausted and ready to pull out and then um, my team said well what you should do is go in an early attack uh, in an early breakaway and uh, see how you go and if you're not good by the halfway mark well then you can pull out go home but what happened was uh, I'm in the early breakaway attack and then uh, people started shouting my name and there's a helicopter filming me and there's motorbikes filming me and all of a sudden I got a bit of adrenaline and all of a sudden uh, uh, optimism started to creep in and, and all of a sudden um, uh, you, the brain is releasing, um, you know, dopamine and all these feel-good hormones. I couldn't believe how I could, uh, in, 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 in one day, change uh, the way I felt. And uh, that had a lot to do with, if you have nothing to lose anymore and it's all over, then risk it all and um, roll the dice and you may well find that the hidden reservoirs of energy will come out and you could do things you never ever thought you could do. And um, uh, that's an extraordinary experience and a lot of athletes can tell you that, especially endurance sports. What, what tips, or have you got any words for young cyclists who, yeah, who yeah. might want to do it there in this water? Yeah, you know, you know, if you're a young kid and, you know, a boy or girl, because the Women's Tour de France is a big thing too now, so, um, you know, there's no discriminating. Men and women can both do the Tour de France. And uh, the big thing is uh, optimism and try and be optimistic when you're at your worst. So when you're absolutely exhausted and you're tired and you can't pedal uh, one anymore, it's to remain optimistic. Yeah, and so practice that in your day-to-day -day life, right? Yeah, like, optimism. Yeah, optimism in everything. Awesome. Thank you, Pat. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>